So here we have a modular character from the Unreal Engine Marketplace. And I've done some very minor modifications to Lyra so that all the bots spawn as Mannies and the players all spawn as this modular character with a random accessory. Here you can see I have some cool hair, which is not the default hair for this head. It's an accessory. How does this work? We're going to find out. Let's look at a conceptual overview of Lyra character parts. First is obviously the character part itself, which can either be full body or can be part of a modular system. Secondly, we have the controller component, which runs only on the server and determines which parts are going to be added. Finally, we have the pawn component, which exists on the server and all clients. And on the server, the controller component tells the pawn component to add or remove parts. And that pawn component then replicates that information to all of the clients, which then actually spawn or delete the actors themselves. To recap then what exists where, the character part actors do not exist on the server. They only exist for the players. These are purely cosmetic actors. The controller component exists on the server, but not on any of the clients. This is what determines which parts will be added or removed. This is purely happening on the server. The pawn component exists on the server and gets direction from the controller component and then replicates to the clients. So this is the one component that exists on the server and all clients. Note that in Fortnite, an optimization that they've made is that the local player spawns a character part that is more detailed, higher graphic fidelity than what the remote players spawn. So any given local player, when looking at their own character, will see more animation, more detail for their character than they do for the remote player characters. You don't necessarily have to do this in your game, but this system does support this kind of extra optimization. What is a Lyra character part? It is one or more parts that get added to the skeleton, like this Manny, which comes with Lyra, or this Quinn, which comes with Lyra as well. These are full body parts, and there's not a lot of customization you can do here other than change the color. An alternative, which is also supported by Lyra, is the modular character system. In this case, you have multiple different character parts that are each make up a different part of the body. Which parts exist will be different based on your game. In general, you can have as many as you like, performance permitting. Here we are in the Shooter Gym map, and I've made a couple of changes. First of all, this by default uses the elimination experience. But I've changed that, I've duplicated it, and made this tutorial experience, and I've changed the map to use my tutorial experience. And so if we look at the tutorial, the difference between the tutorial and the elimination one is this part here. The elimination one uses B pick random character, which comes with Lyra, to choose either Manny or Quinn. For my tutorial, I've changed that. I've made a new one called B pick cosmetics. Here's the default B pick random character, which ships with Lyra. Randomly choose either Manny or Quinn, and that's the one character part that gets added. It's a full body character part. For my B pick cosmetics, if it's a player, we're going to add several character parts to all players, and then randomly we're going to add a head accessory. If it's not a player, then we're always going to be adding this Manny character part. And so all bots are Manny. And all players share the same base body, which is comprised of four different character parts, and then have a random accessory on their head. Here in the default pick random character, this references a couple of assets here, B Manny and B Quint. So let's take a look at B Manny, for example. The B Manny blueprint is just a Lyra tagged actor. 
And for the mesh component, it's using this skeletal mesh, which is Manny. If we open that up, then we can see here it is. Manny is a full body skeletal mesh that sits on the skeleton as you would expect. So there you go, that's it. And then it uses this copy pose animation class. In my case, for the Pick Cosmetics, we are also using B Manny, but we're using some modular components as well. So for the players, for example, we have this part, B Guy Head 1. Let's take a look at that. So this, I duplicated the B Manny blueprint. It's also a Lyra tagged actor. Literally everything here is exactly the same as Manny, with the exception of for the mesh component, I've changed it to be this skeletal mesh, which comes from the free marketplace asset. And you can see here, it's just a head and the head sits on top of the skeleton, uh, but there, everything else is totally invisible. It doesn't try to modify any other part of the mesh. It's just the head that's being modified here. And the other change that I made is the animation class is this ABP UE4 mannequin retarget because this head asset uh, was made for the UE4 mannequin, but we're trying to run UE5 animations on it, so we need to retarget. So the other thing that we did is here's the head. We have hands, legs, torso, and four accessories. We did exactly the same thing here. So now that we have these assets, we just plug them together in Pick Cosmetics. You can add however many character parts you need. In my case, they all go on to the Nun socket. There is no socket. They sit directly on the skeleton. And we don't care about collision for these because we're using the invisible character mesh uh, for collision. If this video doesn't suck, Please consider liking, subscribing, sharing with somebody else who might find it interesting. Thanks. Have a nice day.